Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Wednesday. It's May the 14th. This will be our chart lesson for today, and it was a really slow day. Not a lot of entries today. Uh, started out looking like we were going to have a nice trend, and we just have not been able to get. We haven't been able to breach this 1888 uh, 50 area. It's just been too strong. Uh, it's actually creeped up a little bit to 1889 and a quarter, 1889.50. If we get through there, we still have to get through this 88, um, 50 level, and I just don't know if prices are going to be able to do it. Um, it could be that this is a spiking channel, and this was your channel, and we got the break in the new low, and this was our correction. Uh, but it really just looks like a trading range basically from the open the day we've been in a trading range uh, although the bias would be down because we traded down into this just like yesterday uh, early the bias was up today the bias is down so I hope that's clear because we traded down into this trading range and that kind of gives you your bias so until we're we start trending up and get a nice trend up the bias is still down and we keep bouncing, look like we're going to really bounce off these lows and the market goes nowhere and then it looks like we're going to go lower and then it bounces off the lows again. But it just doesn't appear to be any real uh, heavy volume by the buyers or the sellers, the people that actually move the market. So it looks like to me just us little guys beating each other up. So uh, I didn't mark anything much after 11 o'clock. And as you can see, there hadn't been anything going on really since uh, it really Really, since about 10 o'clock, nothing much has happened at all. We've been stuck in a, since 10 o'clock, uh, I really would call it just a little after 10 o'clock, we've been stuck in 1899, 89 and a quarter to 91 and a quarter. Maybe one time we broke a couple of ticks higher than that. So, you know, basically from 89 to 91, you're, we're stuck in a two point range with most of the price movement being in this one point here. And you've really got a two leg, uh, you know, a two level or two tiered trading range. And then within this lower half, we've actually got another tier in here, half a tier. So that's what I saw today. Uh, I did want to uh, discuss something here. Somebody uh, asked me about this trade. They sent me a um, email and they says, you know, how in the world do you find this trade? Because that only gives you two swings. Well, you, you, I actually was waiting on prices to arrive at this area, somewhere in this area. Uh, originally, I had it just a little lower off that close, and you can see that still gets you there. Um, I was actually waiting on that starting at. Prices reached there at nine o'clock, and I actually started looking for prices to possibly reach that level at 8:51. So that was a fairly quick move up, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. It didn't take very long. There was some good movement going on. Uh, but the way you find that is you draw this line off the lows. You can tell that prices are bouncing right there. You get your first two swings, it bounces again, and if you drag that up, you can see that's the very same line. So yes, there are little tricks and, you know, I show this quite often uh, on the videos and um, so we've talked about this before. You may not have caught it or maybe you missed it, but we do talk about it a lot and uh, I show that quite often how we find the line off the lows and, but it really wasn't clear if this was a spike in the channel or if we'd turn down. So you got to wait till you get a setup. And you get this when you can't go any higher there. There's there's actually there's there's multiple reasons to take this trade. First, look, there's two legs up. So that's a second entry short. You've got a double triple top here that finds resistance at the same identical place. You've got the trend line. If you know how to do that, I just showed you how to do it. Um, so you've got different reasons to be. And even if this is a spike in channel, you're still looking for the retest. So I think with all the reasons you got to go short that this is worth taking, just put a stop there and let it go. And if you don't enter with a stop, wait on it to break lower and drop a limit order in there. And you could have got filled at the same place with a limit order more than once. And then it takes on off 
it pulls back and it turns down and you're looking for a new low and you and I'm figuring prices are probably going to here so you got plenty of room this broke higher first then broke out the low side just have you a stop waiting there easy scalp but it bounced from there but it doesn't matter because we're already out with our scalp and if you're trying to get a runner you've got it at break even and it, so we're okay there and but I don't think you can go long here because there's been no break or proof and so when it turns down right there again with that big bearish bar just go short there again and another easy scalp but then it bounces it goes higher and where does it turn down again and notice what this is there was actually a second entry short right there but because there were two bars stacked up side by side and we weren't quite back and you really needed to adjust this up uh, I go move in the wrong spot just enough to get above those closes right there and so then when it turns up and then goes back down and keeps you this real bearish bar just go short there but and notice that's a first entry pullback and there is a second entry but I didn't like it for the reasons I just explained we, we were weren't quite back to the trend line um, you were stacking up two bars if this would have broke on lower uh, yeah, you might have had a stop right there and gone short. Um, but I would have waited to see if this, especially once this stacked up those three highs and we weren't really going anywhere, I would have waited to see if it breaks higher and then traps everybody. So then you get your big bearish bar. Just go short right there. There was a second entry short here. But again, I don't know if you'd really want to enter there. If you, if you do, you probably want to use a lemon order and... I don't know if you would have got one filled and got out in time. Uh, it looks like you probably could have. So if you did enter here, but I don't think it's worth entering. When this didn't take on off right there on a second entry, uh, I got a little worried about it. So I just sat tight and then you go higher. Another short right here. Again, that's right off these highs where prices have been bouncing. And let me explain this. This is on a big, you got two legs up here, then two legs down, then another leg up. Well, this is still a two-legged move up. There just happen to be two legs in the first leg, then your two legs of correction, and then your second leg up. So on a larger picture, this is a second entry short. And inevitably, somebody will send me an email and say, how in the world is that a second entry short? Well, understand what I just said. There's two legs up here. But that's one leg on a bigger level then there's two legs down and then one leg up so that's a if you went to a bigger chart you wouldn't see all these little slight moves down you would just see one leg up a move down and another leg up and it would be a second entry short that's a little more advanced it confuses people I know and I get that so don't worry yourself with it if you don't get that just concentrate on learning to spot second entries and that kind of stuff. Uh, I'll also say that about failed second entries. People will send me a question about failed second entries, but they can't even find a second entry, much less. So if you haven't learned to spot second entries yet and quite got that down, you don't need to be looking for failed second entries because you'll just be, you'll confuse yourself and you'll, you'll take a trade thinking you know what you're doing and you'll cost yourself money. So until you get really good at spotting the second entries, don't worry so much with the failed second entries. They're, they're beautiful. Uh, failed second entries are beautiful things. They're a trap, and they make us a lot of money. So I know you want to be eager to learn them, but learn the second entry first because once you understand what a second entry is and you can spot it, it's a whole lot easier to, to determine if it's a really a failed second entry that follows it or not. So... Uh, I hope that makes sense. I did want to talk about that. But this was a great setup. Move quickly. And again, I thought we would probably shoot on down to a new low. But we haven't done it yet. And we keep, this market is wanting to go higher. But the the overall downward bias is just, you know, just fighting it out and doing nothing. Look how flat that EMA is. Look how prices are swinging to both sides. That's an obvious trading range and a very tight one, a very dangerous one. So I just don't think it was worth entering anywhere in there past this point. Um, and the only reason I like this one is because it is two legs up and it's in there. There's one leg up, a little correct, two-legged correction, and then two legs up again. 
And uh, so there's really a bigger two-legged. And if you measure it, let me just put the arrow on there. And then maybe there's your first leg. And then you got a little move down, a move up, and a move down. So that's two legs down. And you can see it's a perfect, two perfect legs. And this is your next leg. So your first leg, your two corrections, then your next leg. And a leg, you know, a lot of times people get confused on what a leg is. It's just a move, one consistent move to a new high, and then you get a correction or whatever. So or this, is, this whole move down here is a leg down. Notice you got a leg down, then your two legs up, which one leg of this two legs up consists of two legs and two leg correction, then that second leg up, and then you get the next leg down that's equal to this one. The market moves in twos. And uh, make sure you understand that. And there's actually one leg down here, a correction, and a second leg down. And let's just measure that one so it's easier to see. There's your first leg down, and then you get a move up right there. And so there's your next leg down. And we missed it by, a, it looks like a single tick being a perfect measured move. And then just to make it a little clear here, I've got a brand new mouse and I've got a new computer and there's something, to, there's something, I don't care what anybody says, there is something in NinjaTrader that these wireless mouses don't like. And uh, I blamed it on my old mouse and it might have been my old mouse, but there's leg one up and then there's leg two and this one overshot if you count from right there it's a perfect almost perfect measured move but we kind of overshot that on the way down but for whatever reason I, my mouse just doesn't since they upgraded that one time my mouse has never acted real smooth and exactly like I like it, it it's not double clicking anymore but it still gets hung for just a second before it moves and it uh, you're holding down trying to move something and it just drops it without letting off the mouse and I know it's not my mouse because I got a brand new one I don't think it's the computer because I got a brand new one with new software it's something to do with NT uh, something they made in one of their la latest updates I don't know what it is but if anybody figures it out I'd love to know it gets frustrating trying to move this stuff around and always having trouble with it but it could be one of these indicators I've added on here or something. I don't know, but something's interfering slightly. But anyway, on the trading, see, there it goes. It doesn't want to move down. All right, you got a leg up there, two legs down, and your other leg. I showed you that. And look at that reversal bar. I would have liked it better if it would have broke on lower, but that's still a huge reversal. So uh, you could just go short on the stop there. And uh, you had just enough to get out of that one. And then... Once it bounced there again, then it's pretty obvious that we're kind of stuck here. Just sit tight and wait. Uh, I really still think that they're trying to make a new low. Prices are trying to make a new low. Uh, whether or not we'll get it or not, it wouldn't surprise me if we don't just end up right in here. Or if they keep trying this enough, they may get it to reverse and go the other way. Because a market that can't go lower is eventually going to go higher. And a market that can't go higher is eventually going to go lower. So... Um, just always remind yourself of that uh, when you test a certain level enough times and notice we kind of had an upward bias here um, during this correction we were making higher highs and higher lows really but but notice this there's a leg up there and then there's a couple legs in there and then there's another leg up there and it didn't quite get a measured leg and now we're headed down so I really think we'll make a new low here or we'll at least test this low side we may not get through there but that's what I'm expecting to happen. We could just break lower here and a couple of a tick or two and then trap everybody and go higher yet still. But I still think we need a new low on a retest and it does look like we're going to at least retest this 1888.50 area here. So but that's what I saw today. I wanted to talk about one other thing. Um, somebody asked me about... Um, Okay, I had a slight interruption there. Probably doesn't seem like it to you guys, but notice we did. We have made a new low here, just as I expected we probably would. Um, but back to, I'm trying to remember what we were talking. Oh, yeah, somebody, I got a couple of, I gotten this question a couple of times um, about 
stop orders and limit orders. You hear me talk about limit orders occasionally. And 99% of the time, you want to enter on a stop order, especially when you're learning. Uh, the only time I you want a limit order is when, let's say you decide you want to enter here. I'm not saying this is a good setup or anything. But notice how close you are to right to these lows right here. So if you enter on a stop one tick below that bar, you don't have room to scalp out before you get to these lows. So the only way you might enter that is if wait for the trigger, which would be breaking below this bar right here. When prices broke below right here, drop your limit order and see if it enough far enough back in there, maybe to right here. And that would give you room to scalp out before you get to the lows. So you may not get filled, but you might. And that's the danger. Somebody asked me, why not just always use limit orders? Well, because sometimes prices, the only way to use a limit order to sell is to sell above current prices. So if when this breaks lower right here, the only way you can enter this is to drop your limit order above prices and they may not come back and get you and you miss the trade. So like this trade right here, if you use a limit order and you try to put it in back up here and it doesn't come back and get you, well, then you miss that move uh, and you don't want to miss the really good setup. So make sure you trade with a stop. So I hope that's clear. 99% uh, of the time you want to use a stop. Another time you might use a limit order. Let's say this bar is a little longer and by using the stop, you can't get in and keep your stop above the signal bar, which is right here. So your safety stop should go above here once you enter. Well, if this bar is too big for you to get that and keep it within a two point range, then you might, then you either got to leave your stop somewhere here and it's going to be unprotected or you might say all right i'll back up a tick or two and drop a limit order and that gives me room to keep my stop above here so that would be the other time you might consider a safety stop i mean uh uh yeah entering on a limit rather than a, a stop order and we don't use stop limits at all so just forget those we either use a, a limit order or a stop order a buy stop or a sell stop or a uh, buy limit order or sell limit order. Uh, we don't use any stop limit orders, so stay away from those. Those are dangerous, especially if you're using them for your for your safety stop. So don't use those. Um, and I hope that's clear. But that's about it for today. Uh, we did end up making a new low. Uh, we could keep continue to move low and get another leg, uh, another move down. It would be a measured leg to this first leg down, like so, probably more like this. Actually, I don't want to say it's probably going to be more like this. So a measured move on that first leg would put us down to here. So it's very possible that's where we're headed. Uh, but then again, now that we've got the break and a new low, it wouldn't surprise me if we don't turn up from here and uh, get back in the range or whatever. So. Uh, notice that we've got this move above the range. A measured move for that would put, would actually put, prices down to about here, which is still very similar to the same place we just showed. Uh, so we'll see what happens, but it's it's really late in the day. And I just don't like trading this time of day myself. Uh, the market is so much more predictable and there's so much better movement in the morning. And you can see what happened in the afternoon. Doesn't mean that late in the afternoon you won't get another good move because you, you do sometimes. And that's generally what happens when this thing starts to get tight. It's like a spring that winds up. And when it gives, you get a huge move like that. And uh, it didn't happen, even though that looks really bearish, that didn't happen real fast. It took that move quite a bit to move down there. Um, let's just see how long it took. Uh, it, the move started on this bar, which was at 135, and we didn't make a low until 152, almost 155. So almost 20 minutes for that move, which is not don't don't take that the wrong way. That's not a huge amount of time, but it didn't just drop straight down like sometimes you get these moves that just go in a, you know in a minute or two you drop that far, but. You had all these people getting long in here, I guarantee it, and they just ran every one of them stop. And wouldn't surprise me at all now that if we didn't reverse and end up going exactly where everybody thought it was going to go. But people don't understand how price action operates. And I, I've got another guy, he keeps sending me charts. 
uh, from a hedge fund guy. I'm not going to call any names or anything. Uh, I don't even know who the hedge fund guy is. I know who the guy is that sends me the charts, but I don't know who the hedge fund guy is. And uh, he's always sending me these charts of how he's selling on these breakouts down here and he's buying on these breakouts out here. And, uh, you know, that's exactly opposite of what we teach. And occasionally it will break out and take off like a rocket, but it only happens enough that it'll keep you trying and you'll lose your money. I promise you, trust me. And, uh, you know, a hedge fund, they've got deep enough pockets where they can afford to buy down here and ride it out and let it come go up and down a few times before it ends up going lower. So it works for them probably. In the long run, they'll probably make money, but they're doing it because they've got really deep pockets and maybe not necessarily because they're real experts at reading the price action. If you've got deep enough pockets, you don't have to be able to... to uh, be able to read the price action. We've talked about this before. You, you know, I mean, there's no, there's no secret that we've been in a long-term uptrend. And so if you've got the pockets, you can start buying. Let's just say you start buying here. You could buy all the way down and then wait on the rally. And then look, you get, look, there's, okay. I had a long interruption there, but you can see on the bigger picture, there's a leg up, a correction and a leg up. Um, Looks like the second leg's bigger than the first, but let's just measure it and see what it looks like here. Now you can see we kind of overshot the measured move, not by a whole lot. On you know on the multi-day, on the daily chart, that wouldn't be too big a overshoot. Wouldn't be much different than some of the overshoots we see on the um, on the daily, you know, on the daily on the intraday chart is what I'm trying to say there. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get a measured move here. As we talk, there's leg one, leg two, and we just about got that right there, you can see. So, uh, But anyway, that's enough for today. Uh, downward bias all day, and, it, it, you know, finally the, and this is what happens. You give up, just about the time you give up, then the move finally happens, so. It can be frustrating and, you know, that's why I like to get my stuff done over in the morning and be done with it and uh, go on about my day. So, but anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com and we'll see you next time.